But are we going live? That's a good Welcome question. Welcome in and bienvenue. Here we go. As they say. As they say, indeed. I'm very excited. Hugo, how are you doing today? Are you doing okay? I'm not doing too badly. Thank you. Having a lovely time in excellent. wherever mm. I am. That is excellent. How about you, Jack Rawdon? Yes, yes, I am doing okay. Uh, my dissertation is causing me some stress, but mostly, yeah, doing all right. No. no if anyone talking. would like to read Jack's dissertation, by the way, do send us a message and he'll send that over. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I, will, I'll, I will actually, if you want to read it, you can give me a shout. I'll send it over. Um, it's, it's, look, it's about 25 pages, so it's um, quite an undertaking. Jack, what if someone... What if someone copies and pastes it, submits it as their own before you submit yours, and then you get them for plagiarism? That would be really awful. And also, it would just be really awful. Luckily, um, you, you, we submitted our titles beforehand. So, like, there's that, there's, it's kind of uh, proof that we are doing what we're doing. So, I'm glad to hear it. Thought of everything. Um, of everything. Do you share it on Facebook? Yep, on, on it as we speak. Lovely, lovely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Post. Right, and obviously, some... while we wait, there's an interna- there is an international superstar in front of the show on screen. Can you guess who it is? There we go. Oh, phew. This is it's this it's thumbnail is very uh it's very civilized to thumbnail today, you please know. That's quite a nice one, yeah. Right, we'll be getting started in just a just a moment or so. Just a, couple, oh, a few minutes. That is posted now. Can we um, share it to places? Yes, potentially would be a good plan. Can I, should I share it to Freshly 2020? Or yeah, you... go ahead. Will do. Okay. Share to a group. We've got three people watching, and only one of them's me. No way. Another one's me. So it's all good. We're doing well. That means this must be one whole other person. <laughs> uh, Welcome to you. Yeah, welcome. Absolutely. Very much. Very welcome. Oh. So there we go. That is posted. You're pleased to know. Glad um, to hear it. Jack, have you got any idea who this on screen is? Hang on a second. Uh, <laughs> that is ridiculous. I do, actually. Can I say? Uh, you, can, you can make a guess if you like. I won't tell you if it's right or not. Is it Henry VIII? Is that your guess? Yeah. Only time will tell. Do you at home think something different? Or do you think this international superstar and friend of the show is perhaps Jack's guest of Henry VIII? Henry VIII? Is that, is that how you pronounce that? Henry uh, yeah, Henri. Henri VIII. Henri. Henri the, the wheat. <laughs> That's how it was those, isn't it? Didn't everyone speak French? Mm, I, think, I think everyone spoke French back in the day. Um... Good stuff. So we'll get started in a few, a few minutes. We've got a good quiz for you today, I think, from what I've heard on the on the grapevine. Hugo, can you confirm? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Great news. Excellent. Great Superb. News. The best we've ever done. Great news. Huge news. Can't uh, wait to see it. But don't forget that there is a prize for the winners, and for the best team name, there's also a prize. And then get thinking what your team name might be. Good stuff. If we like um, it, we may pick it. As always, this time of year, my room will probably start in the in the in the, in the light. And in about half an hour, I reckon it'll probably be in the dark. So we've got that to look forward to as well. Why don't you turn on the light preemptively? No, I kind of, I kind of enjoy the uh, the transition here, you know. Okay, so, well, I look forward to that. Yeah, that's great. Um, so yeah, hopefully, we'll uh, people will enjoy the quiz today. I think some varied topics, maybe, uh, as well as obviously the Hillby classics. Um, and the Hillby classics, we've got. A new question writer for this evening. Very exciting. Hugely exciting. And we've also got a specialist round on um, Lego video games. 
originally advertised that it would be board games, but the winning the winning team name decides to change. I can't believe it. It's unorthodox. It, it is unorthodox, but we take unorthodox in our stride here at the Vern Bar Quiz, and I'm sure it'll be an excellent round. Absolutely. Right. Um, let's live it, give it another minute. So you reckon this is this is Henry the Eighth, do you, Jack? Yeah, Henri the the Eighth. Yeah. Should we should we do that and then that'll take a take us a minute and we can talk about who it is and if it is them. Yeah, it's very impressive if you look at this picture you've got here, Jack, that you managed to decipher a person out of this. Yeah, thank you. I just have a sixth sense when mm. it comes to people. Yeah, maybe that's actually just one of your one of your normal five senses. <laughs> so maybe. <laughs> yeah, it could be to do a sight actually. Yeah, three. Um, well, there it was. Yes! It was oh! the Look at that. Expertly done. It was it's the hat in front of the show. <laughs> you got it from the hat, yeah. His iconic Henry VIII hat. His iconic Henry VIII hat. Very lightly oh, distorted. I'm, I'm hugely, I'm no, I'm, I'm hugely excited that I got that. That is, uh, what a great way to start the quiz. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so there we go. Um, and we've got, we've got another classic, um, round number three, which the entire premise for the round is just a pun. Great news. Um, yeah, in true Vern Barker's fashion, it sounds amazing. I look forward to that. Good. Uh, right, let's let's. Why don't you explain how the first round is going to work, Jack? I can do, Hugo. I can do. So, what we're going to show you now is a links round, and what a links round involves is nine seemingly general knowledge questions. However, those nine seemingly general knowledge questions are linked by a tenth question, which is what links those previous nine questions. What is the link? So, what common theme links those nine questions together? Or no, load those nine answers together, and the answer to that is the tenth answer. Well, we had a question in, by the way, Jack. Yes. Um, why is it? I think I know what he's going to say. Seemingly he general knowledge. Because is the knowledge general, or is it what? specific knowledge. in a very, in a very uh, thematic way? Oh, I see. Okay. Well, without any further ado, let's get on with question number one. Jack. Uh, yes. What name for a household appliance also refers to a space entirely devoid of matter? What name for a household appliance also refers to a space entirely void of matter? Mm, what could it be? What could it be? I'm not sure. I couldn't tell you. I could not tell you. Um. A nice picture of Hilda Bead there as well in the background. Uh, if I'm not a classic mistaken, angle, we go for quite a lot. We come back to every now and again. It's lovely. It's very nice. I'm sure that was taken recently. It looks much, much, much more wintry than it is currently. It looks lovely and spring-like outside. Oh, no. No, is that a school of education? That's a school of education, actually, isn't it? Yeah, what did you think it was? Hild. Oh, I thought it was Hild, but that's got Rookie, a right? Bead B- Chapel in the background. Bead Chapel, yeah. Sorry. It's not like I live here or anything. It's fine. <laughs> that's fine. Right. Question number two. Question number two, one of the most famous animals of the 20th century, a member of which species was named after the singer of Jolene? (laughs) One of the most famous animals of the 20th century, a member of which species was named after the singer of Jolene? So we're after the name of the species. We're after the name of the species with this one, not the name of the animal, the name of the species. Bit cryptic, but... If you get it, you're, this might be one that you can come back to after you've maybe got the link. Maybe not. Maybe you've got it now anyway. Yes. Um, yeah. Because there is a point for each of these answers. Move on. Question number three. Question number three. In which Dorset town do the football club nicknamed the Dolphins play? They currently compete in Southern League Premier Division South. In which Dorset town do the football club named the Dolphins play? They currently compete in the Southern League Premier Division South. Same as Truro City, the White Tigers, my team, my home team. Look at that. Look at that. Uh, do, you, do you enjoy that league, Hugo? Are you a, a keen purveyor of that league? They don't tend to put to send to um, broadcast them normally, given it is the seventh league of English football. <laughs> what? But how do you keep up to date with the scores? No, I just have to look it up. Oh, that sounds very stressful. Uh, like the top six leagues, you can look up, like, like, Conference South table, and if you do that, it, Google will just show you automatically what the league table is. But 
they decided they obviously decided Southern League Premier League Division South is a little bit too amateur yeah. to warrant that. I guess so. Good stuff. Question right. Number. Question number four. What sport exists in categories such as freestyle, cross country, and alpine at the Olympic Games? What sport exists in categories such as freestyle, cross country, and alpine at the Olympic Games? Well, Have you got an idea what the link might be, Jack? Um, I don't want to. I do that thing where I read the questions, but I'm not actually listening to what I'm reading. Um, that's okay. That's easily done. Uh, I'll, I'll pay attention from here on out, though. Mm. I think well, I, I'm attention to this one. If you, if you if you give it a bit of thought, I reckon you might get it. I'm not too much time. He's a clever chap. Is our mm. is our Jack right? Question number five. Question number five in the classic children's cartoon Arthur. What species are Arthur and his family? Sorry, in the in the classic the children's cartoon, uh, potentially in the classic children's cartoon Arthur, what species are Arthur and his family? Oh, I, I just see. I don't know if I would necessarily back I myself on this one because of whether of, I can't remember exactly what species Arthur and his family are. I, I've got. I'm split between two. I think yeah. I think mm, I think. Tricky. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Right. Question, Question number six. six. What was the first name of the science fiction writer behind the Foundation series of books? He was also known for his law, his laws of robotics. Yep, I've got the link. <laughs> there we go. I'm glad we got there. There we go. Yeah, I just I wanted to just firm up what the uh, what Arthur's species was, but I think I think that one helps a little bit. So we're just after the first name here. Very well done if you know the last name there as well. I mean, I guess it's... I don't know. I think... I guess you're probably name. not going to just know his first name. Yeah. <laughs> I think they were... They're more I just called him John. Name. Yeah. I mean, that too. I'm sure he would really appreciate that as well. Um, mm. Question number seven? Question number seven. Which variety, <laughs> which variety of mushroom is described on Tesco.com as rich and fragrant with a firm, meaty texture? Which variety of mushrooms is, descri- is described on Tesco.com as rich and fragrant with a firm, meaty texture? Jack, isn't that your LinkedIn profile? <laughs> you don't, let's not go into that right now. Um, that's neither here nor there. So if you tend, this might be a, a good question to firm up what you think the link is. You might think, hang on a second, this is uh, adding evidence to my hypothesis. I will say that when I looked on Tesco.com, this current item is not is not currently stocked. What? That's surprising. I I think I saw it in Tesco in Durham this recently. So I mean, I mean it probably is stocked. I'll tell you what is out of Tesco. Oh, here we go. Go on. I'd say tell you what too is out of stock in Tesco at the moment for seemingly ever mm-hmm. coconut milk. It's impossible to get hold of. It's, it's been out of stock since I'm pretty sure early March. Um, impossible to get. Anyway, I'm so sorry to hear that. Anyway, yeah. on with seemingly question number eight. <laughs> question number eight in theoretical physics, which what four syllable word often follows space time? <laughs> In theoretical physics, what four-syllable word often follows space-time? Is this confirmed? You know the link? Uh, yeah, I think the last one was yeah was a was a one hundred percent kind of confirmation. <laughs> this is a the cherry on the cake. I think it's a great link. Um, thank, you, thank you. It's a classic, a classic Hugo Bush link. To be fair, so I do like my this is genre of link. <laughs> That gives you any hints. Um, question number nine. Question number nine. What meteorological word defined as a mature tropical cyclone that develops between 180 degrees and 100 degrees east in the northern hemisphere? Oh, I, I think. Wait, hang on. Yeah, I, mi- I was missing is because uh, it was being covered by my face. What meteorological word is defined that. as a mature tropical cyclone that develops between 180 degrees and 100 degrees east in the northern hemisphere? Hmm. I presume I presume it's a meteorological word. Would you? Yeah, that's true, isn't it? 
Yeah. 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 Cyclone? That's going to be meteorological, surely. Yeah, yeah, I, I'd probably class that as meteorological. Do you have an opinion on the Domino's Pizza classic order, the meaty eel? Um, it's I got some it, meat on it. I, I do, yeah, I think potentially on that basis, maybe maybe I, I don't feel particularly enamoured with it, but... Mm. Yeah, fair enough. Right, yeah. question number 10. Question number 10, what's the link? What links those previous nine answers together? Please tell me. I just want to know. So just let me know on that on that page. And uh, you Jack another... will be happy with you. And you'll also get a point if you get the link. And it might help you get the rest of the questions. It would be great. Which I will go through again now. Do it. Do it. What name for a household appliance also refers to a space entirely void of matter? Question number two. One of the most famous animals of the 20th century. A member of which species was, was named after the singer of Jolene? <laughs> Question number three. Which Dorset town do the football club nickname the Dolphins play? They currently compete in the Southern League Premier Division South. Question number four. Which sport exists in categories such as freestyle, cross country and alpine at the Olympic Games? Question number five. In the classic children's cartoon Arthur, what species are Arthur and his family? Question number six. What was the first name of the science fiction writer behind the Foundation series of books? He was also known for his laws of robotics and apparently wasn't a very nice man. Mm. Question number seven. Which variety of mushrooms is described on Tesco.com as a rich and fragrant with a firm and meaty texture? Just a reminder that Jack Rawdon is not a variety of mushrooms. So that is not the answer here. What? Question number eight. In theoretical physics, what full syllable word often follows space time? Question number nine. What meteorological word is defined as a mature tropical cyclone that develops between 180 degrees and 100 degrees east in the northern hemisphere? And question number 10, of course, as always, what's the link? Great stuff. There we go. That was the first round through and done with. On we go with the next round, which is a class. He'll be class. Absolutely right. It's an anagraphabets round. Hello. Hello. Um, How much did I cut out for? Uh, not too long, only for about five seconds. Um, and, you know, we knew what was okay. coming. Uh, do you want me to explain the round? Okay, so the anagraph that works. Yes, please. Um, what we're going to show you is a number of questions, probably 10. Um, and we will start with a two letter word, uh, which will then get longer and longer. So the answer to the first question will be two letters, three letters, four letters, etc. Um, however, each answer is an anagram of the previous answer with an extra letter added. So that's very key to know. And if you remember that, you should have a bit more ease getting the answers. Um, but other than that, the questions are general knowledge. So here we go. Thank you very much to Brian for this round. New question writer. Here we go. Question number one. What slang word for thanks is derived from Danish? Which slang word for thanks is derived from Danish? Oh, didn't know that. Ah, uh, um, you a fan of Danish, Hugo? Um, yeah, my my favorite, my no, I normally go for a vanilla cream crown. Oh yeah, classic. But equally, I'll take anything. I um, right. So the, we're after a two-letter word here, and if you take those letters of that answer and jumble them up, and then add a letter, you'll find the answer to this next question. Question number two. In Charlotte's Web, what type of animal is Templeton? In hmm. Charlotte's Web, what kind of animal is Templeton? You can tell you that I tried to learn Norwegian. Um, yeah, it sounds about right. I, I decided to... I don't to, know like, why, but of the Nordic languages, that's definitely the one that you would learn. I tried to learn it because, I don't know, I was, I just, I think I've been using the, the Memorize app for, like, something mm -hmm. at school, and I thought, oh, it'd be interesting to try and learn a language on it. So I tried Norwegian. I think I learned about 100 words before I forgot them all. Yeah, you should always go for languages that in of countries where everyone speaks English. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought it'd be really useful. Mm. So I, I know I just right. know a couple of words in Norwegian, but um, very yeah. impressive. Well, maybe that will come in handy for question number one then. Hopefully, yeah. right. So you know, it was Danish, of course. Uh, so take the answer to this answer. Take the answer to this question. Jumble up the letters and add a letter, and you'll get the answer to this one. Which, which, sorry, which geographical feature is being described here? A blank, or Corriloch, is a proglacial mountain lake, pond or pool, formed in a cirque yeah. excavated by a glacier. Is that right, cirque? Yeah, I think so. 
What geographical feature is being described here? A blank or curry lock is a proglacial mountain lake, pond or pool formed in a cirque excavated by a glacier, glacier, whatever. Oh, that, that's that is uh, that question is make, making me mildly anxious. I won't lie to you. Um, why so? Just because oh, it's, it's just geography. <laughs> uh, Do you know about all about this? Mm, What's not, the official Durham University pronunciation of that last word, Jack? Uh, glacier. Gla glacier. 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 Yeah. Glacier. Mm. Well, it's not, gla it's not glacier. Know. It's definitely not glacier. Okay, well, I'll pass that on. Thank you. Uh, that will inform my, ge my geography presentation. If you take Glad it. to hear it. Um, right, so jumble up the letters to this answer and then add a letter and you'll find the answer to this next question. In 1936, Super Chief was introduced in America. What was this the first diesel-powered version of? In 1936, the Super Chief was introduced in America. What was this the first diesel-powered version of? Wow. Um, don't worry, you go. I'm hard at work at the, uh, at the little uh, interim mm. activity. Please, me. I wonder uh, what that might be. Well, you have to wait and see. Right, question number five. Which culinary technique involves topping an ingredient with a browned crust, often using breadcrumbs or grated cheese? Which culinary technique involves topping an ingredient with a browned crust, often using breadcrumbs or grated cheese? And a reminder that this answer, take away a letter and jumble it up, we'll get the previous answer. No you way. Have to take away the right letter. Yeah, that's right. It works both ways. Mm, it's got a bit dark around near me. It has rather. It seems to do that every evening. It does do that. Hang on, give me a sec. If you, you, uh, I'll just quickly uh, turn my light on. You can read that. Sounds good. Time. Right, question number six. Jumble this answer, add a letter, and get this one. What words can be used to describe someone delivering a formal public speech? What words can be used to describe someone delivering a formal public speech? Hmm, what could it be? Will surely have lots of useful letters in it, though. So we know. No way. Well, I'm a bit brighter now, so that's good. Excellent. So after this one, we if you take the actually, funnily enough, if you take the answer to this question and you add a letter to it, and then or and jumble it up, or do that in a different order, whatever, you'll get the answer to this next question, which is. Which type of tubular pasta characterized by the ridges on the exterior comes from the Italian word for ridged? Which type of tubular pasta characterized by the ridges on the exterior comes from the Italian word for ridged? Great news. So there we go. If you know this answer, write it down. Don't, don't, don't keep it to yourself. Write it down. No, share it. <laughs> Share it with the world, but no one who's not on your team because that might give them an unfair advantage. Exactly. Please don't do that. Please, please don't do that. Right. And funnily enough, if you take this answer, the answer to this question, add a letter and double it up, you'll get this following answer to this question. Complete the Thomas Edison quote, great ideas blank in the muscles. Complete the Thomas Edison quote, great ideas blank in the muscles. What's he called? Um, I want to say um, the Wizard of Waverly Place, but that, I think that's a Disney show. Mm, I think that's that's a different guy. Potentially. Thomas Alva Edison. Wow, is that middle name? Mm, idea thief of the nineteenth century, or whenever. Yeah, not great. Mm, but I'm not sure. Right, that's okay. Right, question number. Nine. If you take the answer to this question, add a letter, jumble it up, you will get this following answer. What process can be defined as the act of leaving one's own country to settle permanently in another? What process can be defined as the act of leaving one's own country to settle permanently in another? He was called the Wizard of Menlo Park, apparently. Oh, uh, what, the Disney show? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, uh, because that was where his research laboratory was apparently 
Um, this deep you know exactly like this round. Right? Sorry. Yeah, so true. <laughs> when you with this round, Jack, question the answer to question number ten. If you add a letter and jumble them up, you'll actually get the answer to question number one. That is just ridiculous. It's like a, an anagraph of its word snake. Who'd have thought they would ever have seen a live day together? That's not true. It's not true. That wouldn't work. Sorry. Say again. It's fine. It's fine. It's a brilliant time. Everyone's brilliant laughing time. and jo- jovially joking with each other. Um, question number t- question number ten. Which biological process is in the growth of plants requires water, oxygen, and correct temperature? Which biological process in the growth of plants requires water, oxygen, and correct temperature? This is probably true for a lot of processes processes in the growth of plants, but we just want one in particular. The answer is constrained, of course, by the previous letters. This one, please. Just the one would be... Oh, oh, right, thank you. Right, I'm going to go through these again. Question number one, what is, sli- what is what slang word for thanks is derived from Danish? Question number two, in Charlotte's word, what type of animal is Templeton? Question number three, which geographical feature is being described here? A blank is a proglacial mountain, lake, pond, or pool formed in the Cirque, excavated by glacier. Question number four, in 1936, the Super Chief was introduced in America. Will, what was this the first diesel-powered version of? Question number five, which culinary technique involves topping an ingredient with a brown crust, often using breadcrumbs or grated cheese? Uh, question number four, what can be used to describe someone delivering a formal public speech? Question number seven, which type of tubular pasta characterized by the ridges on the exterior comes from the Italian word for ridged? Am I frozen? Oh no, Jack's just still. Uh, question number eight, which Thomas, uh, complete Thomas Edison quote, great ideas blank in the muscles? Question number nine, what process can be defined as the act of leaving one's own country to settle permanently in another? And question number 10, of course, as always, which biological process in the growth of plants requires water, oxygen, and correct temperature? There we go. Um, well, Jack, now we've got uh, a fun round for you today. Jack, what's your favourite like word for a, like a group of islands? Uh, probably archipelago. Archipelago. Can you say that again? You cut out for me. Archipelago. archipelago. Well, the, oh, this next round is based on arch- this. This next round is based on the archipelago. No way. Surely not. Yeah, it is. It's it's RQP logo. Oh this is, so this round is called RQP logo. Uh, we're going to show you the letter P in a logo, <laughs> and we want you to tell us what the what the brand is. They're not at all about islands at all. No, look, it's, look, P logo, like RQP logo. Yeah. It's all about islands. Excellent. Uh, so, so we're going to show you a letter P in a brand logo, and we want, to tell, we want you to tell us the, the brand. So here we go, question number one. Zach, do you want to, do you want to oh, read out the P's and Yes, blank? I would love to. P blank, blank, blank. Question number one, P blank, blank, blank. What P yeah, logo? The nature of me zooming in and cropping does mean some of the pictures are quite low res. Sorry about that. Which P logo is this? Which uh, P blank my rank is what we're looking for. So hopefully you know it. If you do, write it down. Would you know this one, Jack? Absolutely not. I really don't know at all. Um, mm, he he doesn't know about brands. <laughs> what? He likes to support. He likes to support local businesses. Right. Mm-hmm. Question number two. Oh. Uh, P blank 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 blank. Mm, well, well, well read actually. Yeah. Thank you. This this one we we've got a bit of context behind the P, which might help. Well, those islands. <laughs> yeah, that might help you. <laughs> um, okay. So, um, Hugo, what's your favourite archipelago? Uh, ours is silly. Oh, classic. That's a patriot, Hugo. Such a Cornish patriot. <laughs> yeah. Say, sorry. <laughs> oh, I, no. I said you're such a Cornish did you, patriot. Did you say enthusiastic things about the Isles of Scilly? Oh, yeah. I am. That's true. Yeah. And do you want to know my least favourite archipelago, Jack? What? I'll tell you in a bit. Question okay. number three. Blank, blank, blank. Blank, P, blank, blank. Blank, 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 P, blank, blank. Sounds fun to say. Um, my least favorite archipelago is, of course, um, the Canary Islands. <laughs> well, that's uncalled for. You never even went. You never. You don't know. They might be great. I'm sure they're lovely. <laughs> um, I was going to go to the Canary Islands, but unfortunately, due to unforeseen circumstances, 
that didn't, that didn't take place. Right. Question. Mm, maybe this is quite a hard one, actually. It's been quite a hard round, to be honest, but yeah. maybe you recognise that pink P there. Right, question number four. Question number four. P, blank, 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 blank. So, um, P, blank, 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 blank. Is this a ridiculously hard round? Uh, it's fine. Nah, it's fine. I think I know this one. I think it's like one of the only ones I actually know. Mm, impressive. It was a, a bit of a team one. Someone to work out how many letters are in things and someone yeah, to exactly. know the logo. Right. On we go with question number five. Question number five. Blank, blank, P, blank, blank, blank. Blank, blank, P, blank, blank, blank. Here we've got a little bit more logo context yeah. to you there. Might help you out. Um, oh, I'm having a great time with this. You're going to really enjoy it, I'm pretty sure. Always ahead. Right. Ready to read out the, the blanks and P's of Absolutely question right. six? Question number six. Blank, 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 blank. And the first letter is a P. Wait, that's not right at all. <laughs> P, P, blank, blank, blank. Don't ignore the first thing I, I mean, said. it was right, but... <laughs> no, it wasn't. I said, I said blank, 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 and the first one's a P. Oh, yeah, maybe... I guess oh, no. Yeah, this is quite low red. Sorry about that, everyone. Uh, so we... Oh, my gosh. It's so exciting. You're going to love the strand, Hugo. Oh, dear. I'm sure I will. Look forward to it. Yeah. Right. Question number seven. Question number seven. Blank P, blank, blank, blank. Blank P, blank, blank, blank. That one is quite ridiculous. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a lowercase P. Mm. That's great, though. I'm too fair. Um, that might be all you need. Yeah, it's not a very particularly interesting font they've gone for there. Mm -hmm. um, I guess it's just a bad company. Uh, Jack, would you like to officially condemn this company before knowing what it is? Um, no. Would you like to? Okay. Yeah, well, I know what it is. Oh, that's true. Mm, that's a tricky. Right, <laughs> question number eight. It's number eight. Blank, blank, P, blank, blank. Blank, blank, P, blank, blank. Maybe this is so, really hard. Oh, no. It's, I'm sure you'll cope, everyone. Oh, it's fine. The thing is, like... Might be a bit of a differential round. It's fine. We, people like a hard round. Um, mm, that they do. Oh, that's a great question. All right, good stuff. So if you know that one, write it down. By the question way, if you're one. watching and you're Hillbead and you haven't yet book, booked a table for Beer Fest. If you haven't yet booked a table for Beer Fest, by the way, everyone, there are still tables left on Sunday. Question but they're number going fast nine. from what I've seen. Uh, yeah. Question number nine. Blank, 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 blank. P, blank, blank, blank. Um, <laughs> this is a good one. Um, so, yeah, yeah, no. So, yeah. B beer Fest tables are zooming out of the way. So, have they we heard that? Yeah, so Saturday is completely, completely booked. Uh, fully booked. And Sunday's getting there. Whew. So, but get in there fast. So off the presses. We are the official propaganda wing of Hill Beat. I hope that's okay. It's fine. People want that. Mm. And right, of course, question number 10. Question number 10. Blank, 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 blank. P, blank, blank, blank. Well read so, in all of these cases. Thank you. So blank, 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 blank. P, blank, blank, blank. Not B. Right, I'm going to go through those again. Do it. So we've got this one. P, e, blank, blank, blank. Why did I set the precedent? Now I have to do all the blanks. Oh, no. Question number two. P, blank, 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 blank. Question number three. Blank, 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 blank. P, blank, blank. Question number four. P, blank, 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 blank. 
Question five. Blank, blank, P, blank, blank, blank. Five, no, six. P, blank, blank, blank. Question number seven. P, no, blank, P. P, blank, 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 blank. Um, blank, 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 P, blank, blank, blank. Question number nine. And question number 10, of course, as always. Uh, blank, 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 P, blank, blank, blank. That was great. Go. That was really rich. Do you think that was... I'm glad we got the theme of archipelagos out of the way, though. Yeah, it's great. We don't have to ever cover we, those again. We never have to do that again. I thought it was a good round, though. I, really, I enjoyed it. It was a good round. I'm glad to hear it. All uh, right. The next round is our specialist round. Jack, why have we got a specialist round? So, Hugo, we have a specialist round because the winners of the best team name last week got to pick any round they're choosing to be asked on this week. And they asked for Lego video games. So this week we have gone away. We've written a round of Lego video games and we are going to deliver it to you right here, right now. So without further ado, let's get on with this round, Hugo. Here we go. Question number one. What decade saw the release of the first Lego video game? Lego Fun to Build. Wow. What decade saw the release of the first Lego video game? Lego Fun to Build. I love the background as well. It's just, it's just one big nostalgia trip for me, that background, I think. Oh, yes. I think don't, I played... don't talk too much about your nostalgia. Don't want to give too much away. That's true. Don't want to, don't want to give away anything about nostalgia. Right. So I guess a decade of this one. Question number two. Lego Star Wars, the video game, was the first Lego video game in the Lego Star Wars franchise. <laughs> I can't believe I wrote that as a sentence. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> um, that was fine. On which three films was it mainly based? On which three films was it mainly based? So Lego Star Wars, the video game. On which three films was it mainly based? There, it was a, a little bit was based on another film. But on which three films? How interesting. Was, was it mainly based? Oh. Good stuff. Um, I never played this one, the uh, original. Well, it's not too late. Question number three. In Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga, what non-Star Wars character is a playable character? In Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga, what non-Star Wars character is a playable character? Yes. Yeah, I played this one. Do you know the answer uh, then? It was a great one. I do, yes. I do remember very well. Uh, I'm hoping there's not another answer I'm forgetting about, but it's... Let's hope not. I think That's so. Fine. Right, question number four. Who is this Lego video game character? Who is this Lego video game character? This is this is really good. This is a really good round. I think anyone that wrote, asked for a round of Lego games will be very will be very enjoyed like when you put this on the end. What a great time. Uh, so if you know this one, good for you. I'm glad you know it. Good for you. You might be able to guess from what he looks like, what his name is, or whoever it is, they. Question number five. In 2009, Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga was ranked as the 23rd greatest video game of all time by the Gamers Edition of which annually produced publication? In 2009, the Lego Star, Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga was ranked as the 23rd greatest video game of all time by the Gamers Edition of which annually produced publication? I didn't know gamers existed in 2009. Yeah. Not enough things have gamers editions. I don't know why um, Simon's weekly email doesn't have a gamers edition. <laughs> I think he's building up to that. I think that's potentially going to be next month. Uh, the next step, yeah, true. Yeah. Okie dokie. Right, question number six. six. Pirates of the... Sorry? Yeah, no, yeah. No, no, let's keep going. No. Oh, I'm glad. <laughs> let's go for it. Sorry. <laughs> Um, okay. Uh, it's okay because I don't think our dodgy connection is is causing any halts in the not at all in the that, like, in the quiz. It's all going very smoothly. Sorry. Another popular Lego video game is Lego Pirates of the Caribbean. One of the playable characters is Elizabeth Swan. Who plays Elizabeth Swan in the films? Another popular Lego video game is Lego Pirates of the Caribbean. One of the playable characters is Elizabeth Swan. Who plays Elizabeth Swan in the films? Mainly. Again, I don't want the person who plays like child <laughs> Elizabeth Swan. 
And if you do, if you do know that, and you're not, and you don't know the child, then you shouldn't know that. Yeah, I think people. I'm sure people will be able to guess, like to get by, by association, what he we're talking about here. You'd like to think. Yeah, probably right. Okay, question number seven. Another popular video game features characters that strongly resemble Lego minifigures. The game in question is also known for its oof sound effect when the character dies. What is this game? So another popular video game, a non-Lego video game, features characters that strongly strongly resemble Lego minifigures. The game in question is known for its oof sound effect when a character dies. What is this game? I mean, Lego games are also usually, you know, the oof sound is uh, it's iconic. Yeah, it's pretty ubiquitous, but it's particularly known in this game, I believe. I'm hoping. Probably. According to Wikipedia, anyway. Right. Question number eight. Which film later adapted into a Lego video game stars these actors? Hopefully you can see them all despite our faces and the Zoom logo over it. So which film later adapted into a Lego video game stars these actors? I'm sure... Hmm. Agree, Jack, that that's a ridiculously all-star car. Yes. <laughs> um, arguably incredibly all-star cars. I think I need another film, potentially. But it is ridiculous that they had this uh, this kind of talent in there. Um, Maybe you do, but we shall see. Right. Question number nine. Which Lego series adapted into a TV series, video games, board games and more is loosely based on an aspect of feudal Japan. <laughs> Which Lego series adapted into a TV series, video games, board games and more is loosely based on an aspect of feudal Japan? Oh. Hopefully this is the... If this is the round you asked for, hopefully you are enjoying it. Hopefully it is what you hoped it would be. So. Um, very exciting stuff. Right, and question number 10. Harry Potter is another franchise that has been adapted by Lego. An aspect of this franchise that appears in the book film and even in Lego form is butterbeer, a fictional drink said to taste a little bit less sickly butterscotch. Despite being fictional, some have attempted to recreate it in the real world. For example, on planningwithkids.com, Nicole, a Melbourne mum with five beautiful kids, um, Nicole, in her recipe, uses 100 grams of butter, one cup of caramel topping, and 1.25 litres of what popular soft drink? <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's a beautiful question. Uh, it's, just to clarify, it is Nicole's words, not mine, that she has five beautiful kids. I've not seen her kids. I wouldn't like to pass judgment. Uh, that's so I'm going to run through these questions again. an interesting recipe, that one. If, uh... The answer mm, is what I think it is. Sounds tasty. Right, okay. Fun to build. Question two. Lego Star Wars the video game is based on which three films? Question number three. In Lego Star Wars the Complete Saga, which non-Star Wars character is a playable character? Question four. Who is this Lego video game character? Who's this? Question five. In Lego, in 2009, Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga was ranked as the 23rd greatest video game of all time by the Gamers Edition of which annually produced publication? Sorry, it's a bit Star Wars heavy. Okay. <laughs> Question six. Another popular video game is Lego Pirates of the Caribbean. One of the playable characters is Elizabeth Swan. Who plays Elizabeth Swan in the film? Question number seven. Another popular video game character... Uh, um, feature, another popular video game feature characters that strongly resemble Lego minifigures. The game question is also known for its oof sound effect when the character dies. What is this game? Question number eight: Which film later adapted into, into the Lego video game uh, into a Lego video game stars these actors? Blimey! Look at those all-star cast. There we go. Question number nine: Which Lego series adapted into a TV series, video games, board games, and more is loosely based on an aspect of feudal Japan? And Nicole, in her recipe, uses 100 grams of butter, one cup of caramel topping, and 1.25 litres of what popular soft drink to make her butter beer? Shout out to Nicole from planningwithkids.com. Handy information. Right, on we go with this final round. It's the wipeout. Jack, how does the wipeout work? Well, Hugo, the wipeout works as follows. So we are going to show you 10 general knowledge questions. 
Uh, and it would just seem like a regular round. However, there's a big catch, a big thing to remember here. If you get a question and you write down the wrong answer, then that is zero points for the whole round. So when you write down your questions, you'd make sure they're bit, like, you have got to be 100% sure that that's the right answer. Because otherwise, that's zero points for the whole round. You can choose not to put an answer to a question. That's fine. If you put an answer, though, if you put an answer and it's wrong, that's zero points for the whole round. So without further ado, let's get on and start yes. with it, Hugo. Yes, and as you can tell by the font of the word wipeout, this is a classic Annabelle round. So thank you very much, Annabelle, for this. Also, I'm, I'm, I just, I, I'm overjoyed to see. I have no idea what it is, but I'm over, overjoyed to have learnt now about Sunshine Barry and the Disco Worms. <laughs> um, right. So careful footing, everyone. But here's question one. Question number one is from you. Question number one, a dray or a scurry is a term for what, for a group of what animal? A dray or a scurry is a term for a group of what animal? Ooh. Good question. Um, might check that, Let's see if I'm right. <laughs> you, you're famously a big fan of these kind of questions, aren't you? It's fine, we don't need to go there. <laughs> No, I, I don't mind it as a quiz question every now and again. It's just, I don't think people are going around being like, oh, look at that murder over there. Oh, I went to the zoo and there was a major embarrassment or something, you know? <laughs> that was just me when I dropped my ice cream and started crying. That's fine. Question number two. Jack. Question number two. The city of Pontianak in Indonesia is within 1 60th of a degree of what? The city of Pontianak in Indonesia is within one sixtieth of a degree of what? Uh huh. Um, yep. Uh, there you go. So there you go. What could that possibly be? What could it be within a sixtieth degree of what? Um, so, Hugh, are you familiar with the background film? Right. Let's go to the next one. Question number three. Question number three, which novelist is the best-selling author of all time? Which novelist is the best-selling author of all time? That just oozes contention. <laughs> it really does. That's fine. I'm sure that's just what people want to see, and it'll be completely without issue at all. Mm, I should think so. Question number four. Question number four, which male cricketer was voted BBC Sports Personality of the Year in 2019? Um, which male cricketer was voted BBC Sports Personality of the Year in 2019? Um, as we say in my family, sports personality isn't that an oxymoron. <laughs> great. <laughs> it's a great. It's a great quote there. Great quote. Thank you. Uh, I'm looking up. Um, fair play. Fair play. Question number five. Question number five. In terms of native speakers, which language is the largest? In terms of native speakers, which language is the largest? Um, what could it be? Where? What country do you think Sunshine Barry and the Disco Worms come from, Hugo? I feel like it's either Czech or Finnish. Okay. What are you going to go with? Czech. It's Danish. Oh. You're in the right neck of the woods with the Basically, what I said. Halfway between okay. the two. I think if you, yeah, I think you've divided by two, basically, makes. No, not uh, that. Question that, number That's not true. Number six. Question number six, which mathematician's theorem states that every differentiable symmetry of the action of a physical system has a corresponding conservation law? Which mathematician's theorem states that every differentiable symmetry of the action of a physical system has a corresponding conservation law? Wow. That's right, a question. I don't I want to... That's a tough sounding question. Yeah. But this sounds like it's... Surely a, a Bee Gees tribute with you Barry so? and Disco in the title. Yeah. Um, but in fact, the plot is 
Barry is frustrated to be at the bottom of the food chain and does not want to work at the waste processing plant. He decides to set up his own disco band and achieve stardom. My question to you, Hugo, is how did anyone think of that plot? Um, by the way, um, that does sound like a great time. Uh, I found a useful, another useful bit of information we'll disclose to you after question number seven. Question number seven, the opposite sides of a die will always add up to what number? The opposite sides of a die will also will always add up to what number? Right, so in the parents guide bit, it has a severe for sex and nudity. <laughs> because apparently Gloria, who I assume is one of the characters, shows some topless clothes in the middle of the movie. So that's, that's severe. I'd like to know what topless clothes are. Yeah, I don't really know. That makes me feel very uneasy. But to be fair, um, that is only based on six user votes. <laughs> Who gets offended by Sunshine Barry and the Disco Worms? Well, so, I don't want to watch this smut. <laughs> right, question number eight. Question number eight. Which musical instrument was invented in 1932 and was quickly adopted by jazz musicians? Um, so give that some thought if you know it write it down but only if you're very sure because otherwise you might get zero points the whole round remind it one wrong answer is zero points the entire round so do you want to risk it I don't don't I'm not a fan of this at all I'm watching the trailer for what, it you're not a fan of oh, but if you're wondering the German name is um, Sunshine Barry und die Disco Wurmer. Does that help? Thank you. Yeah, it and in Italy, it's called Barry Gloria e, e Disco Worms. Yeah, I mean, so that's sure, got Gloria not? in the title, which is nice. And of course, it's, in Spain, it's called Barry El Rey de la Disco. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't even have the word worm in the title. <laughs> Barry the king of the disco. Right, that's fine. Question number nine. Question number nine, which Roman general was responsible for the burning of the Library of Alexandria in 48 BC? Which Roman general was responsible for the burning of the Library of Alexandria in, in 48 BC? Um, oh no. That's not fun. Anyway, yeah, this, this film just sounds like a a great time by all in all ways um so that's great should we uh, by the way uh, six user votes uh based on six user votes it's also voted the lang the profanity as mild um because there's some mild language not strong what is it do they give any examples i uh, know it just says there's some mild language not strong oh okay yeah thanks yeah that makes sense great news hmm Okay. Right, here we go. Question number nine, ten. Final of, the, final of the quiz. Final question of the quiz. Which 2004 teen comedy film is based on the book Queen Bees and Wannabes? Which 2004 teen comedy film is based on the book Queen Bees and Wannabes? Oh, I think I know that. But would I back myself? Definitely not. Risky, risky to do. No, it wouldn't have. I'd have got it wrong. Whoa, that just shows you. Tricky stuff. Easy to wipe out in this, in this day, and, day and age. I'm going to run through these and so there's a little refresher. So, question number one a dray or a scurry is a term for a group of what animal? Question number two uh, the city of Pontianak in Indonesia is within a 60th of a degree of what? Question number three which novelist is the best selling author of all time? Question number four, which male cricketer was voted BBC Sports Personality of the Year in 2019? Question number five, in terms of native speakers, which language is the largest? Question number six, which mathematician's theorem states that every differentiable symmetry of the action of a physical system has a corresponding conservation law? Blimey. Question number seven, the opposite sides of a die will always add up to what number? Question number eight. What musical instrument was invented in 1932 and was quickly adopted by jazz musicians? 
Question number nine, which Roman general was responsible for the burning of the Library of Alexandria in 48, in 48 BC? And question number 10, which, which 2014 comedy is based on the book Queen Bees and Wannabes? Queen Bees and Wannabes. There we go. Final question of the quiz. Pen, pens down. Put them down. Put your pens down. However, however, crucially... Go. That's the end of the quiz. Early... It's a good time. It's time for the answers. Let's Come go. Um, so we now swap. Me, I will do a few of the answers of one, one, three, and five, and Jack will go for two and four, I guess. Perfect. Yes. Right, here we go. The links round. So question number one. The household appliance is, of course, a vacuum. A vacuum. Vacuum. Question number two, the most famous animal, this one is, of course, sheep. It's a sheep. Dolly was, of course, the name of the sheep, named after oh, Dolly Parton, the singer of Jolene. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, but the answer is sheep, because we wanted the species, not the name of the animal. Question number four, the Dorset Town, I don't, think it's a, I don't think it's a particularly popular football club. Sorry if you're a big fan of the Dolphins, but it's, of course, Pool, Pool Town Ooh, FC. Dolphin. Of course Pool. it is. Um... Cross country alpine and freestyle all skiing event. Skiing. Skiing. Um, Arthur and his family are Aardvark. Aardvark here. Aardvark. Who are you thinking, Anteater? Uh, yeah. But yeah, then I was like, I'm fizzling, so. Don't have a long enough nose. Don't have a long enough nose to be an Aardvark, to be fair. There's nothing like an Aardvark. It's clearly a bear, but that's fine. Question number six. Uh, this is, of course, Isaac. Isaac Asimov. Isaac. Um, shiitake, shiitake, shiitake. Jack Shiitake Rodden, as they call him. Yep. Due to his his being him being rich and fragrant. Yep. Uh, I won't. No. Um, this one is of course continuum. Continuum. Uh, for, uh, 180 degrees or whatever. What's the, the question is? It's a typhoon. 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 And Jack, what do you reckon the link is? Uh, I think the link is words with double vowel letters. Say again. Sorry. I think it's double vowel letters. Each word has double vowel letters. It is. They're, they've all got two vowels in. All contain double vowels. I don't think we'll take the point for double letters. We want double vowels. Good stuff. Right. Let's and then we're going to graph that around. Question number one, the answer is tar from tack, I think. Is it tack? I think it's mm. thanks in Danish. I don't know. Maybe it's, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Charles Webb, rat is Temple, Templeton the rat, of course. Templeton the rat. Uh, question number three, that is a tarn. Uh, a tarn, Provincial Mountain Lake. Question number four is a train. Of course, a train. Question number five, that is gratan. Gratan is the kind. Well, we do have an answer that's Gratan every week, but I wouldn't want it. Any no, I other thought way. that as well. It does fit quite nicely, I guess. Uh, question number six. This is orating. Um, orating. Question number seven is rigatoni. Rigatoni is the pasta, from the Italian word for ridged. Handy. Question number eight is great ideas originate in the muscles. Great ideas originate. I don't know in... what that means. No, I mean the Wizard of Menlo Park. There, yeah, yeah. No, very true. Up. Question number nine: um, Emigration is the act of leaving one's own country to settle permanently in another. Emigration. And number ten is germination. Of course, germination is the arm there. That's what you're looking for. I think we're only accepting this answer here because it has to fit the rest of the. Of the anagraph that you know. Yeah. Right, then we had our archipelago around. Archipelago logo or polo. Of polo course. Um, then we had this one, which is of course Persil. Persil. Uh, then this P, very well done if you got this. This is Oh, am I frozen? Or is Jack still? Oh, I'm just still. Oh, sorry. Moonpig. It's Moonpig. Ah. It's their new logo. Nicely done. You've got that. Uh, this is Panasonic. 
Nice. Panasonic for this one. Typhoon. We already had Typhoon. So it was just about time we had Typhoon. And it's not like it was a coincidence. I did write both of the questions today. Uh, but that's fine. Um, then we had this one, which of course, Puma, Puma, however you want to say it. Classic. Um, Puma, Puma. The actually main logo is over there, but the words, that's the font they use. Uh, this is Apple. And Jack wouldn't even condemn Apple. I, I, didn't, I didn't want to say anything that I would later regret. Mm, that's fair enough. Um, then we had Pepsi. Pepsi there. Um, well, then we got that. And then, of course, a slightly easier one. Maybe you recognize that little half a moustache. It was Monopoly. Monopoly. Monopoly, of course. And then Liverpool. This is Liverpool Football Club. Liverpool. This That's is the top bit of the stuff. crest. High res stuff. Then we had our Lego video games round. So the first answer is. This was 1990s, in particular 1995 is when the game came out, but the decade was in 1990s. Uh, this was uh, The Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, Revenge of the Sith. So it was the prequel trilogy. There is one mini episode. They do have a mini episode of A New Hope in the game, but it's yep. mainly based on these three games. This was Indiana Jones. This was the, uh, the Indiana Jones with the answer here. So you unlocked him in a very special way. So I can't quite remember now, but. I'm doing it. This this was Ant Man, so of course, iconically Ant Man. Um, oh, I had Marvel in the background. That's helpful. I didn't even notice that. Yeah, yeah. Question number five. That was the Guinness Book of World Records, Gamers Edition, of course. Guinness Book of World Records, classic. Classic. Uh, you can. You will also accept Guinness World Record book, obviously. Of course, of course. Uh, Kira Knightley played Elizabeth Swan in her adult form, of course. So. Kieran Knightley is what you're looking for there. Kieran Knightley. Uh, this was Roblox, of course. Oof. Um, the oof sound, which is uh, so beloved amongst everyone out there. What a game. Question number eight. Uh, this was the Lego movie. Of course, the Lego movie was the film that was adapted, and they were the people that were in there. Huge cast, huge cast. What an all-star cast. And that's just that's just some of them. There's even more as well, obviously. It is, it, the, the, list more people. the list goes on. Uh, this was this was Ninjago. This Ninjago was the answer here, based on Feudal Japan, loosely. And question number 10, of course, is Lemonade. What else could it possibly be? Had to be Lemonade there. Had to be Lemonade. There we go. Then we had a wipeout. And question one of the reminder in this last round, if you've got any, if you've written down the answer and haven't crossed it out, and it's wrong, then that is zero points for the entire round. But if you've got a question right, that's just one point, plain and simple. Unless you've got another question wrong in the round. You know. Andreas Gary is, of course, a group of squirrels. It's a uh, Pontianic in Indonesia is in a, within a 60th of the equator. Of the equator. Uh, the novelist, best song of all time. Let's, it balls if you went for this. I hope you haven't worked out on this because I feel like it's contentious, but with it's fine. Agatha Christie. Agatha Ooh. Christie was the answer here. Agatha Christie. Thank you very much, Annabelle, for this round once again. Uh, ben Stokes was the sports person of the year 2019 because um, they thought that the, the fact it hasn't been a woman since like 2006. It's fine. Yeah, that's not ideal. It's not fine. It's not fine, but I'll move on. Question number five. In terms of native speakers, the language, the largest language is Mandarin or Chinese. Mandarin Chinese. Mandarin Chinese. Question number six. Uh, the mathematician is Emmy Nota. Emmy Nota, if that's how it's pronounced. Oh, Sorry, definitely. Emmy, if you're watching. Um, other sides of the dice, of course, will always add up to seven. Always add up to seven. How you know... Okay. How to make a dice if you're ever making one, if you know, it happens sometimes. The musical instrument, uh, quickly adopted by jazz musicians, was the electric guitar. The electric guitar. No way. Mm, fun stuff. Uh, the Roman general with was responsible for the burning of the Library of Alexandria was Julius Caesar. Julius Caesar, the man himself. Not great. What a what a guy. 
but he burnt down the, the library so no one could get free books. Oh. Um, even if they had their special library card. Yeah. Uh, and this is, of course, uh, Mean Girls. Mean Girls was Queen, Queen Bees and Wannabees. Jack, have you made the post? I have indeed. It's going out right now. So uh, if you find that, that post, which is currently right there. So it's sitting there on the Hillbead SRC page. So that is there for, for your taking. So Hugo, that time of the week again, uh, where we test your self-proclaimed razor sharp general knowledge ability. I don't, it's not true. Oh no. Um, so Hugh, you're a Spanish student, aren't you? Uh, yes, that is correct. Uh, in Spain, there's a city called Seville. I'm not sure if you're aware of it. Mm, rings a bell, rings a bell. Yeah. And do you know what? Seville is also a type of this type of orange. So today's round is going to be on oranges. Um, I should get five out of five in this, surely. You think so? So question number one, which state produces the most oranges in the United States of America? Um... I would have said California. California, okay. Uh, how many cups of cornflakes would you need to consume the same amount of fiber as in an average sized orange? Average slice of orange? No size, just a whole, a whole orange. How many cups of cornflakes would you need to, to have the same amount of fiber? Cups? Yeah. Eight? Oh, interesting, nice, okay. Uh, what came first, the, the colour orange or the fruit orange, in terms of the naming of the orange? I think, the, no, I know this, the fruit came first. Okay. Uh, what region of the world do oranges originate from? Part of the world. Well, if I give an answer, will you tell me if it's, it's within the right sort of magnitude? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to say the Mediterranean. Okay, thank you. That's 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 what? an acceptable magnitude. Oh, he's frozen. That is an acceptable magnitude. Yep. And uh, question number five: How high is an average mature orange tree in meters? Five. Hmm. Okay. So you said which state produces the most oranges in the USA to California? Uh, it's Florida, the Florida orange. No, the other one, the other, the other state. One. The other state. You need seven cups of cornflakes, but you said eight, so maybe half a point. That's pretty good. That's pretty, that was definitely the right ball. That's very generous. According to the website that I was reading, the color orange comes before the actual orange. No. You disagree? Well, I disagree. You, you can take that one off the website. Um, oranges originate from Southeast Asia, so um, ah, too bad. Not necessarily the Mediterranean, and the the mature orange tree is normally up to nine meters in height. Is the average height of an orange tree is nine meters? That wasn't great from me. That's okay. So you, I think you potentially got half a point out of five, but they were a difficult. One. I'm, <laughs> I'm potentially one and a half points. Uh, yeah. Well, we can quickly we can fact check that. Which came first? Orange, colour or fruit? Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, to be honest, you're actually thinking we're right. So we're, we're changing that. 1.5 out of 5. You got 1.5. Yes, 5. I did it. <laughs> there we go. The, the website I was using was clearly faulty. I'll take it. And we don't normally do this, but I'm going to do a few notices. Do it. So that's all right. Thank you for that round. If you're more than me, you're officially smart and social sex. So very well done. Doesn't take much these days. Um, so coming up is beer fest weekend. Hope to see beadstock weekend. Hope to see some of you there. Also, right. so this week, this quiz for the exam period, a little quiz break for the exam period for the next four weeks or so. But don't worry, we're still going to be putting that weekly quiz content. It just won't be a live stream. So we're going to put out a, a shortened uh, version of the quiz every week and you can watch it at your leisure and comment your score and team name below if, so you, if you want to, but there's no pressure to, obviously. Um, so just, just while everyone's got exams, I feel like people will be less keen for the quiz. 
but there will be we will still give you some sort of provision. Absolutely. So right. there we go. And she go. So, when are we thinking of resuming the quiz? Should we say we will keep you posted? We won't say yet. Well, but it will be it will be in due course. It will be in due course. Absolutely. Okay. Um, let's see how the team names are going. Uh, it will be interesting to see. So, what well, have we got? Scores on the doors. <laughs> oh, they're good. They are good. Oh, they're also that good. Oh, this is difficult. This is so difficult. I don't know. I don't know where to look. Uh, uh, it's really, they're all good this week. This is going to be very difficult. I want to give everyone the best team name. This is a strong showing. I'm not sure how I'm going to choose. Um, well, the Wooden Love's three, and I'll, I'll take the take the reins from there. Okay. Uh, we'll go with Rich and Fragrant with a meter text is my Tinder bio. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, it's not a great team name, but we have nerd nerd suggestion. The mathematician. Quite enjoyed that. And uh, can you oh, say that one again, please? Sorry. Uh, it's not a great team name, but we have no other suggestion. No, no other suggestion. Uh, yeah, nice. Yeah. And, uh, uh, Lego Ninjago to the polls. Just because, you know. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of good ones. There are I, good ones I, 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 I vary on what you need to target towards me. I might go for a, a really stupid pun. I might go for a clever one. I might go for one that just makes me chuckle. I'm going to go with a clever one today. I like the one about, but we didn't, we had no other choice. Oh, I think we're going to have that one as the winner. Okay. Well, it's looking like it might be a, a double whammy as well, because that is, I think, the team with the best score this week as well. Um, wow, very impressive. But it was a close one, and they were all great. I genuinely, like, I, I, I find it very stressful to choose. Um, I just went with my. Team oh, there's some very good team names there. Good, yeah. good job team in general. <laughs> very strong performance all around. Right, but it looks like we have we have, have you commented on the. I have. Using the power. Excellent. Of okay. So I'm going to share screen again. So that I can announce the winner. The winner. Yeah, sorry. Um, is it is? It's not a great team name, but we have no other suggestions. Very well done. You've won so much today. <laughs> not least, obviously, this this is for no one else. This is for your eyes only. The winners. No one else go to this link. I mean, go to whatever it is. But here's your prize. Oh. Oh. It's another mystery link. It's another mystery link. So if you go to bit.ly slash vern mystery seven three three. I just make up the number because the number doesn't mean anything. I just went for that number. Uh, then you'll find your prize. You'll find your prize. It's a fun experience for you to look at. So look forward to that. Good stuff. Glad to see it. Glad to see it. So hopefully you enjoy that prize. Thank you everyone for playing this week. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed. Um, yeah, so, you know, keep an eye on this quiz in the future. Who knows? We might be able to even uh, at some point before the term is out get started with some physical quizzes who knows oh and jack have you seen what the specialist round is for the next quiz we come back to uh no because it is egyptian mythology <laughs> wow so we what will a... look great we will look forward greatly to that so well around. hope you enjoy this link hope you've joined the quiz maybe see you soon yes um so yeah i think that's that brings it so yeah we will try and why well, I, I think we're going to try and push for physical quizzes at some point, but we'll, we'll keep it online as well, like a, a multimedia experience of physical mm. and online. So we don't lose people that are just coming in online. So yeah, so look look out for that in the future. But in the meantime, have a good exam. So enjoy our pre-recorded quizzes for those. Um, and yeah, I guess Hugo, you got anything to say? 
I thank you for watching and see you soon.